Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever time or place you are. Welcome to our session. Um, it seems that life is going back to normal. We only have 16 people with us on the school. Uh, we used to have numbers in the 70s and 80s. So it means life is going back to normal. So that's good news and, and good luck to everyone with accommodating with the new way of, of living. But I believe that all will be back to normal soon. Uh, welcome with us on this session. This session is related to one of the main products that we have, but we want to make sure that instead of considering it as a product, you actually consider it as the award that pays off all the hard work that you do through the year with clients, with providing your services, and with being the great consultants that you are. Um, as I mentioned, it's a product, so it's the Constantinos International Award. And uh, our speaker today is Christina Chang. She's going to talk to us about the award itself, how it evolved since it was launched, what's the new in this uh, award, what benefit it has to uh, the IMCs, what benefit it has to the CMCs, give us some background and give us the futuristic look, if I may say. And uh, Christina is um, the marketing and PR at UBIT. Uh, she's on our Constantinos International Award team. Uh, her study uh, is media management. She worked for four years at international advertising agencies, but since 2010, she has been with you, UBIT. Um, so she has the dedication. She knows all about uh, our award. She has been with our team uh, since it launched, and she's the best person to tell us about it. Christina, the floor is yours, my dear. And uh, before we start, I just need to uh, highlight one thing. All during, like we always do, if you may please uh, keep muted. Um, if you have any question, uh, for Christina, if you want to ask about anything, please include your question in the chat box. And after the presentation is done, I will moderate those questions and we'll make sure you get your answers. Christina, please go ahead. But please unmute first. Okay, now hold on. So now, you now you're unmuted. Yeah. Now you can go ahead, my dear. Okay, um, welcome and good morning. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here today, I think for the first time. Uh, I'm doing marketing and PR, as Rum already said, at UBIT. And I um, have also been involved with Constantinus International Award in the past 10 years, because it was launched uh, in 2011. And um, it really evolved over the years uh, because uh, we have the goal, like Reem already said, to promote excellence uh, in consulting services worldwide and want to show also the client side and working together um, with the consultant. The goal also is to have a different host country every year to uh, show different countries, different projects worldwide. And um, we already have been in, in, in many, many countries. And uh, we have, uh, I think like many of you already know, uh, winning categories, we have one gold medal, uh, we have silver medals, uh, it's usually two silver medals, but we also already had three silver medals. And since I'm here, we also want to, um, you know, show the national champions and, and appreciate every country that's participating. So we also have national champions from all countries participating. And uh, here you have a little overview uh, how many countries already have participated with this project uh, in the Constantinos International Award, like uh, from Algeria, of course, Austria, Brazil, Canada, Finland, Germany, um, all over the world, Italy, um, Japan, Netherlands, uh, to Taiwan, Ukraine, and UK. Um, so it's a very, very, um, you know, big, big um, project now all over the world. And I think it's also exciting to be uh, somewhere else every year uh, in different host countries and bring all of, of the nom nominees together to and to award 
the medals uh, in gold and silver. So now uh, we have a new goal um, that I want to uh, bring to you um, in a minute. And first, I want to show you again just the timeline in general so that you have uh, the overview how it works in the background. The goal is, um, you know, from March till July to have all the nominations of participants. Um, so we want to motivate ARIMA, thus motivate all IMCs uh, to have participants, uh, up to three participants per country. From March till July as well, we also have uh, the online submission phase where all the projects can be submitted. And, and uh, then we go into evaluation phase in uh, approximately July till August. So it's just, you know, not the exact data, but just to have a sort of overview. And uh, then of course we have the award ceremony money in uh, different host countries so far uh, in early October. Um, this year we have postponed it, but in general, of course, we have the award every year in another country. Now we have um, a new goal. So we really want to bring um, even more power into it because we have a new role uh, for each country. We want an ambassador from each country. And the ambassador should be the interface between the ICMCI, the local IMC, and the Constantinus team. So the ambassador should bring, uh, from each country should bring all of them together and support the local participants and give them an insight and support to really, really, if there are any questions or if you need anything, uh, to really have the back backup from the ambassador. And of course, he also has a role to promote the Constantinus International Award among the, the IMCs and uh, to assist all of the participants or applicants. And the goal will be that each country has an ambassador and this ambassador should be in function for two until four years. So that he's really um, established, knows of not all of, all of the stakeholders can support uh, the local uh, participants in the best way. And uh, the ambassador is, like I said, should be from each country participating. So each IMC should have an ambassador. This can be different people. Uh, it can be um, a member of IMCs. It can be uh, an entrepreneur. It can be someone who's really um, established in the market and wants to support the Constantinus International Award. Um, the ambassador uh, is, also, is also in the role that the local IMC has to name the ambassador. So the local IMCs have to find someone who's willing to do that and who wants to support the Constantinus International Award. And um, it's, uh, it's also, I think, an important role because he um, he's somehow uh, he's also somehow, uh, you know, important to promote the award, to um, answer questions in the submission phase, and uh, to be there for all the participants. Above that and behind that, there's another role uh, we would like to establish in the Constantinus International Award, and that's uh, the honorary president. The honorary president would change every year. So it should be a highly esteemed person from the host country, which changes every every year, like I said. And the honor, honorary president is also um, someone who uh, would be uh, implemented in the whole Constantinus Award ceremony, also in the jury evaluation. So he or she should be on stage and should represent also the host country and the award, which means before and after, if we have press activities, media releases, coverage, whatever, um, the honorary president is also somehow a face to the media, um, to the outside, uh, for the Constantinus International Award in the host country. So it would be, I think it's, it would be good if it's a person that is quite 
um, known, a face that is known, that also fits in with the Constantinus International Award and represents it in a very good way. Um, yes, um, like we said, we also have videos where uh, the president can be uh, included um, on social media, for example, we could also uh, make a lot of, of noise, I think, with the honorary president if it's a somehow well-established famous person. And uh, the honorary president has a function for one year um, because he's related to the host country. So now we have two different new roles that we would like to establish in Constantinus International Award. The ambassadors for each from each country for two to five years and the honorary president, which would change every year and would be in function for one year. Um, so if I think that was the general overview now. And um, if you have any questions that go into detail or if you want to know more or discuss it, um, I would love to discuss it now with you. Thank you, Christine. So uh, now we're going to uh, the questions and answers, but before then, um, I would like to focus on the fact that, number one, this award is our celebration of ourselves, just like the International uh, Consulting Day is, uh, just like any um, phase where we feel as consultants that we have given back to our community, have helped our clients, has been there for our economies. So um, it's an award that we should be proud of and should feel its importance before even starting to promote it to everyone else. Um, there's one thing that I kind of want to focus on, and it's the fact that it does not just recognize you as a consultant, but it does actually involve the client in the ceremony. It involves the client in the acknowledgement. So it's like you're partnering with your client to make sure that you have a good project that is worthy of going into the uh, Constantinos Award of being recognized as an international successful uh, project. And, and that is how you actually make the clients feel that they're part of all of this process, the process of uh, delivery, the process of being there all throughout the project, and most importantly, being there when the recognition does happen. Um, it's, it is preferable that the applicants are CMCs. Actually, uh, they should be CMCs. They should be part of our network. Uh, they should be consultants who know what a code of ethics is. It's a consultant that actually uh, understands and believes in the ISO 20700. And that is what took place last year. Um, during the, uh, um, the year, the evaluation of the uh, uh, Constantinos Award, its criteria was updated and the ISO 20700 was included in there as well. So what, what is happening with this award is that it is evolving. Whenever there is change, it is included, it is part of it, and uh, it encourages um, CMCs and, and consultants to always keep abreast of what is new in serving the clients properly. I know that um, uh, Christina did a great job in showing you how many countries have already um, been awarded and how many of those participated. But by the end of the day, it is the international award to us. So I, be, in my mind, and maybe I'm being too optimistic, I feel that all the 50 IMCs should each year have at least one nominee, if not three. So showcase your good work, showcase what you do, get acknowledged for it and and actually this gives you exposure not just at an international level but also nationally think of um and maybe here some might not like what i'm gonna say you guys do a lot of good job yet you feel that you're doing it and 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 all the benefits end up going to the client because the client is the beneficiary by the end of the day of your services all the stakeholders that were involved but at times you feel like i could 
get the quite uh, quite the credit that I deserve for making this a success. Well, we're giving that to you on a gold platter. Showcase your success. Show that you have been doing a great job. It doesn't have to be a multi-million type of project, but it has to be a successful one. And um, you have the right to it, um, as simple as that. You have the right to show that you are doing well, that you are serving your community, you're serving your clients, you're serving the profession, and you're serving your economies. Uh, be part of this, get the acknowledgement that you deserve, and make sure your clients get that too. So again, thank you, Christina. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we already have some um, questions. And um, Soren, what you say is, it means that when we ask for proposals for hosting the international conference, we should ask them a proposal for honorary president. That is correct. Christina, may you comment on that? Um, yes, exactly. So you, um, you want to, as, as the local IMC, you should name one honorary president or um, maybe think of a person that would fit in the host, host country um, to represent the award. Someone who has a connection to consulting, like you said, Rima, and who is uh, into that business or has a connection to that business, also the client side with, with the consulting, the partnering. Who represents that and um, I think it should be important that it, it should be a person that is known more or less uh, in the public in the host country so uh, he can also bring uh, some attention uh, or more attention uh, to the award especially as media coverage uh, is mentioned or press activities uh, videos and social media um, yeah so I see another question. Yes, and it's from Lydia. Yeah. Uh, it's about, uh, just to clarify, an ambassador for each IMC nominated by the IMC? Yes, it should be nominated by the IMC. So you, you can uh, call out uh, for nominations and then you uh, select uh, the ambassador you uh, think is, is most appropriate for that function in the local IMC. So what, what you're trying to say, Christina, is that yeah. there are two roles. There yeah. is the ambassador that would be involved, Lydia, for more than just one year. That person who will be named the ambassador will be the champion of the Constantinos Award in your country. He would be the person assisting the IMC in promoting it, assisting the IMC in gaining more uh, visibility for it, um, engaging with consultants, mainly CMCs, who want to apply for it, uh, providing them with the support, technical support on how to apply, um, what kind of criteria they should make sure that they cover in their, uh, in their proposals for, uh, for the award, um, assist um, during the application phase, stay in touch with the Constantinos office, and that's Christina and myself. Um, make sure that um, the applications that do get to the uh, Constantinos award uh, are the ones that properly kind of represent what management consulting is in their country and stay involved with us and them in order to make sure that we create all the proper visibility for it. While the honorary is the person that is named by the host IMC, that person would be involved from the minute the host country is named. Uh, the person would be involved with, again, uh, the Constantinos office and the executive office at RCMCI in order to make sure that um, number one, it's properly promoted like pre-press releases when talking about the event in their country and promoting the event in their country, they would also continue to mention that the event would also include the Constantinos award plus be there on stage with everyone during the ceremony itself and get the proper exposure and the proper, let's say, image of what the Constantinos is all about. That's why Christina kept saying it has to be a prominent person in that society, whether in the society of consulting or in the economic society or in any business that um, it could be a client, for example, who has strong belief in this award. And after that, that person would also have the role of supporting in the media. So it's two different roles, both named by the IMC 
each have a certain uh, validity, let's call it. Uh, the ambassador would be named for two to four years, while the honorary president uh, of the Constantinos in that country would be named for that year when the country is hosting the event itself. Again, what we're trying to do and what the Constantinos office is trying to do is to make sure that this award that represents us, our work, our achievements, does get the level of acknowledgement that it should get. Um, there's another question from Silva, Christina, and it seems uh, next year we will host Constantinos Award in Armenia. Yes, Silva, it will be in Armenia, and I hope by then all the COVID negativity has gone, uh, everything would be back to normal, we'll be able to travel to your beautiful country, I just can't wait to be in Yerevan again, and uh, enjoy our successes, have a wonderful conference, and name more Constantinos uh, awardees. Uh, thank you, Silva. And yes, please, everyone, make sure that you're with us next year. We can't have missed each other. Let's let's meet and hug, please. Um, Lydia has a question, yeah. uh, Christina. Any criteria for the selection of the ambassador? Um, a member of the local IMC and a person from the host uh, from the from the uh, relevant country. Yeah, that's more or less the criteria. Apart from uh, the selection, you have to do as the local IMC. Uh, which ambassador you prefer best for the function? So, Lydia, it has to be someone who uh, believes in the in the Constantinos Award. That's the first step. Yeah. With regards to knowledge of the details and, and what the criteria is and how the application uh, is prepared and everything, um, we will do that. We would do the transfer of knowledge to that person. But the most important criteria, I believe, right, Christina, is their belief in this award. They need to um, be a champion for it. So it has to be someone who actually believes that it is an award that uh, that needs to be known to everyone. It could also be someone who already was involved with Constantinus International Award, a nominee or a winner, a winner. even better, a person who has, the, like you said, uh, the, the fire for it and wants to go for it and support others to also win the award. Correct. And, and someone who already underwent the process somehow would have the, the knowledge of what it's all about. Um, I, I can't but remember the winners last year from China and, and the, the beautiful atmosphere that they created for all of us, um, the beautiful uh, visibility that they gave to the award with videos, with photos, with, with having events after uh, they got awarded. So it's that type of spirit that we actually need to be with us. Uh, celebration all through, okay? Um, Christina, okay. another question yeah. from Andrea Jansel, and he's asking, as I understood, the ambassador should be defined as a role in the IMC statute. Um, well. In the Constantinos office, right, Christina? Um, I don't know if it's in the IMC statute, but, um, it, of course, it should be a role that you um, define in the IMC uh, so that we really can promote the Constantinus International Award and uh, have the process uh, every two to four years to have a new ambassador, like you said, Rima, um, someone maybe who already has the experience uh, participating in it. Um, I don't know if it has to be in the statute but it should be a role that, that is uh, defined in your local IMC um, connected to the Constantinus International Award. It could be someone who's already from the board, it could be someone who's working with the different committees, or it, it could be, like I mentioned before, um, it could be a client. It could be someone who actually would carry the flag of the Constantinos and just have it burn all year through uh, until you get nominees. Now, many of the IMCs actually, what they do is they have their national award. And anyone who wins that national award ends up automatically being uh, promoted to the international award and, and uh, our applicants. So uh, actually, I got a question a few days ago from one of our IMCs asking, um, 
if it's okay to call the national award the Constantinos Award. And uh, and I want to spend just a couple of minutes on that, Christina, if I may. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did at the ICMCI is that we prepared some sort of an assessment criteria for the awards themselves. So if at the national level, you already have an award uh, where you choose the best project, what could be done is that you apply to ICMCI and provide your selection criteria and the assessment criteria and the process uh, for that award. And what we do is we um, assess it against the Constantinos International Award. And if that passes, then you can name your national uh, award as the Constantinos country. For example, I'm from Jordan. And if IMC Jordan does that, then uh, the award at the national level in Jordan would be called Constantinos Jordan. Um, and, and that way we can have all nominees, all winners, sorry, of the nomination in the country automatically go to the international Constantinos award as nominees. So think of it, you would be number one, uh, scaling up your national award, making sure it meets uh, the criteria of the uh, international Constantinos award. You would be carrying the flag nationally as well as internationally. And Constantinos gets to be a name that uh, continues to be mentioned uh, all year through. Um, a question from mm -hmm. Risto Ivanov. Is there a standardized application package for candidates, application form plus supporting documents? And if yes, could you send us the link? Um, we, by now, we have documents, supporting documents, where you have the different roles and responsibilities, and also the steps that you should follow um, for the applicants. That's what we have. There's not a link in specific, but um, we have the steps put together in supporting documents where you can find everything you have to do to find the right person for it. Um, Risto, if you go to uh, the ICMCI website or the International Constantinos Award website, you would find uh, all the criteria in there. You would find the information of uh, how to apply, but not the application itself. Because like Christina said, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, the application phase is within a certain period of time. The applicants or those who confirm that they are going to apply would receive their credentials in order to access that area and start preparing their application. The application doesn't take a minute or an hour or a day. The application is a proper process where you would need to cover each point, compare it with the selection criteria in order to make sure that even though you have the knowledge, at least you're making sure that everything that is going to be assessed is included. So it's, a, it's an online application and even the assessment or the uh, jury work is done also online according to what you provided. So that part only goes online for a certain period of time, which is the application time. But um, before then, all the information pertaining to uh, the application, the steps, how it's going to be assessed, and, and the timeline that Christina covered for us is available either at the ICMCI website under the uh, Constantinos Award or uh, at the International Constantinos Award website. I hope this answers your question. Um, any more questions, everyone? Okay. Uh, uh, Rima, if you allow me, yes. I, will, uh, I would like to send a message to our colleagues and actually our friends. Uh, let's transform the year that it seems that we have lost in, Constan in Constantinus International Award into a winning for the next year. So let's start the, the promotion and the, the preparation for next year as quick as possible. I know that now it's too early, but if we start in September, October, it would be much, much better to prepare a, a good slate of candidates for the next year and to have a, a, a larger number. And this depends very much on the ambassador and who is pushing the process. If the ambassador is the right person to push the process in their uh, country, is good. And uh, unfortunately, we 
don't have a system which is running by itself. We need people to make it moving for various reasons. I don't know. But as participant in all the international, Constantinus International Awards since it was established, I can tell you that it's really a very, very nice atmosphere and you feel like you are part of a great uh, group. So that's my message. I don't know in which quality. Gerd is going to tell me. Most probably is head of the NSPC. <laughs> Looking for the future and seeing which is the next uh, team coming to the, to the profession itself. Thank you. Thank you, Soren. And, and yes, remark. let's make it a beautiful event. Please, Gerd, go ahead. I have a remark. Okay, can Please. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Fine. Thank you, first of all, for uh, your wonderful presentation, Christina and Rima. Rima, especially you were working out uh, very good uh, the benefits of the uh, Constantinus Award. But there is a big obstacle. I've spoken with a lot of potential applicants and they have mostly the question, uh, shall I do this work? Uh, it is a lot of uh, work or some told me it is a hell of work to participate on this award. Uh, they estimate the award in general very high, but then they say, um, what kind of help do I have? And so my question would be, uh, what kind of advice do the ambassadors have to overcome those obstacles for application at the Constantinos? And this is a question to you, uh, Christina, as well. Mm -hmm. because I think the first thing would be uh, that we have to work out, first of all, uh, the benefits what are the real benefits for the applicant? And there is a weight between the work which is to do and the benefit, what is the outcome, yeah? And we must uh, have a look at this balance so that the work what should be done is less than the benefit. And this we have to communicate. And I don't know uh, if we don't give uh, some advice to the ambassadors, if not even ambassador do his, uh, his thing and uh, his ex explanations, uh, but we need some standard, a standard explanation concerning the benefits of the application at Constantinos. Okay. Was it understandable what I yeah, yeah. thought? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Rima. I, I estimate very high your engagement and uh, you gave, a, gave us all a good explanation about the Constantinos. Uh, but we must be careful uh, that we don't lose our key question. Uh, the key question is how can we attract our consultants to participate? And all other things are nice to have around. Yeah. Okay. Christina, do you want to start? Um, I think uh, that's maybe also the, the role of the ambassador and therefore it should, it would be um, the best thing if he or she could be a person already involved in the Constantinus International Award yeah. because um, he or she would know the benefits and could also support um, the new participants. But yes, I think maybe we, we also should, should put down all the benefits um, or make them more visible for a uh, possible right. uh, and should also give this to the ambassador, um, like a package for the ambassador to uh, engage even more mm -hmm. uh, applicants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd appreciate this. Yeah. Right? If, if I may add just also yeah. some of your concerns, good. Um, yes, part of the transfer of knowledge to the ambassador, or actually all the transfer of knowledge to the ambassador will take place. It would be me, Christina, Alfred, who will be doing that. And, and um, again, I kept saying that it has to be someone who has passion for uh, recognition, someone who would let everyone know that being recognized for your work is worthwhile your time. But also I want to mention something. Now, 
the application doesn't take just the one person to fill out the application. Like from um, last year, I was also a juror, by the way. And when looking at, at all the information that was provided, um, it's simple questions, Gert. It's not questions that come out of nowhere. It is questions that actually a consultant needs to address to the client. So even in the proposal, the answers to those questions are available. In the, in the closing phase and in the um, finalizing and closing of a project, many of what we ask for should also be included in there. So it's work that's already been done. It's just collecting it and putting it in a manner that actually shows the achievement, shows the outcome, shows the impact, shows the involvement of the client and what have you. And it's all from documents and processes that a successful CMC would have actually underwent with their client. So it's ready material that you need to include in the application. And, and Another very important thing, I mean, if a project takes a year, wouldn't you, if you believe it's a good project, wouldn't you spend three or four hours to fill out the application? You've already spent a year on it. You've already showed your client what a beautiful job you have done. You've already involved your client in a manner where it was a beautiful, seamless project all through. Just four more hours. Less, it could be less if all of, the, all of the information was included in your proposal and it was done according to the ISO 20700, then you just need to copy paste. Because the questions have the answers in the proposal, in the, in the closing of the project, in the communication that takes place. It is ready material at your end. If you believe it was a successful project, spending a year on it or six months on it, adding four hours to fill out that application is negligible to me. That's from my point of view. And, and getting the recognition that you deserve, that your client deserves. It's, I, I believe that us jurors actually, we spend more time in looking over the applications than the applicants themselves spend in putting together the information. So if we're putting our time for you, why don't you put those four or five hours to fill out an application? It is worthwhile, believe me. Does that kind of answer your question, Gert? I, I, think, that, I think that there is a little bit more, uh, Rima. It's, uh, Please go ahead. You are, you are so good in selling uh, products and creating empathy around them. And everybody, nobody can say no. But I think that a successful Constantinos International is based on very strong national awards. So if the, the IMCs are doing a nation, and it's good for everybody, that is visibility, which is national, and you have the IMC, which is showing that it's doing something. I would say it's a very good example, but they have too much resources. So you have to find somebody with less resources, which is doing the same. So if you generate uh, the right moment to have good projects, then you can promote some of them to the international. And if it's anything to be changed, they shouldn't copy necessarily the format. It's not so difficult because all the information is inside the project itself and in the evaluation. Because at the end of the day, which is the difference of the international uh, award to the others, is that we are bringing in the client, which I think that this is very wise. So when you bring in the client, actually bring in the market and to show that the profession is useful and helps and blah, 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 and all the, not blah, 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 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I, I want point. to say? I, I'm, not selling, uh, I'm not selling cucumbers to the gardener, as the Bulgarian and Romanians are saying, yeah? Uh, but this is the idea. So I think that uh, the, the good thing is that we have ambassadors. The bad thing is that the ambassadors are not really pushing internally are trying to find one, two or three projects to go international and say, that's the job. No, the job is to create the award at national level and then to push the winners at the international level. So you have a, at least two step approach. Okay, that's it. I'm not saying anymore. Anything. It would be three step approach because uh, the ambassador might also find it worthwhile to yeah. apply for their national award to be uh, assessed as the uh, against the International Constantinos Award, and then it could be named as Constantinos National. Since Good? you are asking them to, to bring the client, this is already a, a step forward. 
in this direction. Correct. Underlining the words of Zorin. Okay. And thanks again to you, Rima. You are really identified with the Constantinos. It is to feel and to, to yeah, to realize. Uh, but I'm coming Celebrate. back to my key question. How can we attract um, uh, people and consultants uh, to attend at Constantinos? Uh, so we did, and this is my input, and perhaps it is a chance for the ambassadors as well. Uh, we have as well in Austria the problem uh, that we don't find a mass of applicants. So, and we in uh, the province of Lower Austria uh, did last year, uh, this year, one thing that we invited all the candidates who are interested, who were interested, and then we were giving them a host to help them uh, with the application, explaining the application and so on, because we, are we have to realize, and I'm in the jury in Austria as well, and I found out uh, that a lot of participants don't fill out all the questions. And um, this is lazy done. Uh, this is um, uh, not possible in participating in an award. And so we had a good experience with this system. And I think uh, if the ambassador uh, could go in a video conference as well and give them assistance for the application, then we would have perhaps easier, more applicants for the Constantinos. And uh, we in Lower Austria was successful. We had suddenly more applicants than the year before. Just with this uh, action uh, that we gave them a host and a help uh, for the application. Mentors, in other words. Yeah. And yes, we've done that at the International Constantinos Office Good last year especially with applicants whose English is not first or second language yeah. uh, because the application and the process is all in English. So what we did, we named mentors for some of the applicants in order for those to support them in the process and properly understanding what the questions are all about and in properly making and in making sure that they properly apply for it. So uh, that was also done by the Constanti by the International Constantinos um, Office. And, and um, Again, that's why we're seeing more applicants and more winners from uh, the uh, Asian uh, countries. And that's why uh, China last year, they did that very well because they had been applying for a few years before and it was always about the language and the translation. And by naming the mentors, they were able to actually uh, hit the nail and, and make sure that they portray themselves in the manner that uh, the award deserves and, and what they wanted to actually share with everyone. Thank you, Gert. Yes, it's being done at the international office and, and mentors are being named. But I believe that in the future, it's going to be the the ambassador who does that. Um, the ambassador would have to play the role of mentor. Um, he would have us uh, as a support in case there are questions that he or she couldn't deal with, but also it would be someone whose the transfer of knowledge has already happened. Yeah. Uh, they already are aware of what it is, uh, the application phase and, and how the jury works and everything would be shared with this person. And, and the person would be enabled in order to do the work and it's not a work that happens once a week or uh, something that uh, he or she would address like uh, once every month it is it, it should be part of that person mm -hmm. knowing and, and actually appreciating what the Constantinus is about we have some questions um, there's a question from you Lydia about when do we expect the ambassador to be expected is it for 2020 or 2021 um, uh, if you allow me, Christina, I will answer yeah, that yeah. and say, yeah, uh, what I would want to say is that after this session and after we send out the video to everyone, we're going to make sure that we launch the program. We would be asking for nominees to the ambassador program by the beginning of our year, which is in, in July, August. We would name those ambassadors so that we have enough time in order to transfer the knowledge to them.
and uh, make sure that within those six months uh, or eight months up until uh, February and March of next year when we would start expecting the applications that those would be people who are enabled um, have the knowledge would be able to transfer it nationally and for us to give them good proper time for them to implement uh, what needs to be done during that phase so it's going to be launched uh, within a couple of months maximum a month actually but the work on it would take us at the Constantinos office a while after receiving your nominations your RMC's nominations and then that person would be rolling in his role um, uh, there's another question from Risto. Could you share the IMCs with the IMCs some best practice from IMCs that organize successful uh, all process, promotion, collection of application, and selection of a candidate? It can be useful for IMCs that want to join uh, to the process. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that uh, from um, let me look at who's in attendance. Um, I believe that IMCs that follow this actually are Austria, Canada, uh, Turkey. They did it for a while and, and then they stopped due to uh, internal manners, uh, matters. Sorry. Um, uh, Gert, could you, could you give more on that? Or maybe Soren can also do that afterwards. Gert? Yeah. I think um, the same like uh, what I mentioned uh, to the ambassadors, that there should be an international standard. We should work out the standard program. Uh, what is the process uh, for, the, uh, for the ceremony? What is the process for the application? And uh, this must be communicated very well to the ambassadors. And the ambassador's role could be to look after in her country, is it done? Are they following really the standards? Yeah. Uh, this, I think, is the most important work we have to do. And I will uh, talk later to you, Christina, as well, mm -hmm. about, uh, so that we, I come in touch with you after the conference, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can, uh, I can assist you as well, because you have as well a hell of work and, and uh, could not do everything. So. But uh, I think these uh, standards should be worked out um, due to the national specialities. Because uh, what is a dangerous uh, moment, uh, we shouldn't give uh, the National Institute the feeling uh, that everything is uh, done um, by the headquarter so, or by some kind of a headquarter. So they must go their own way, but in following the standards, like we have to do in our work. Um, we have the standard, for instance, the ISO now, uh, but then every consultant have to uh, consultant have to follow his own way and his own philosophy. Yeah, and so we must leave them their own philosophy and their own ideas, but together we they have to follow special standards okay um, and if i may say um because there is another comment from andrea actually that uh, kind of uh, complements what was uh, asked by um, uh, Risto. And uh, what Andrea is saying, the National Institute could easily take the global evaluation criteria and apply it to national award. But yes, it could be done. But remember, at ICMCI, we have the culture of maintaining cultures. So even if we take the international and you implement it at a national level, there could be things in there that at a national level you'd like to do differently. That's number one. But most important, we need to see that the IMC, who is putting together an award, actually has the proper setup for it. Maybe what you have on paper and what we assess in comparison to the uh, international award is too different. Yet it covers the main points that, uh, that we have at the international level. Then we keep it as is. So it's all about your culture. It's all about your processes. It's all about how you want to yeah. uh, implement it at a national level. And it doesn't have to be copy-paste. 
and raya. It doesn't have to be a mirror, but it does have to have the, the essence or the core of what the International Constantinus Award is all about. We don't want to um, cancel uh, identities and, and each country has its own identity. It has its own way of, of, of uh, preparing awards, preparing mm -hmm. uh, and having its own processes. So do that, even if it's a simple process, even if, if um, you feel that it looks simple on paper, do it. And once we assess it against the international award, you would notice that nothing is too different. The core is the same, and that is our CMC. The core is the same because it is all about our ISO 20700, and it's all because of our separate cultures that actually come together and make us international. So uh, it's, it's, it's better if it's done at a national right. level and then taken to the international. That's very right. Uh, this is the second key. I think as well, we have to win, first of all, the IMCs, the national IMCs. Because in the national IMCs, I must not explain to you, they have worked enough. And uh, the, the reaction is always, what else should I do? Uh, should I do and uh, should be done? in our IMC and um, so everyone has enough to do and so we have to convince them and even show uh, to help the IMC, the national IMC, especially from the smaller countries, uh, what is the benefit for the IMC as well, for uh, yes. mm -hmm. participating the uh, Constantinos. Because I see, uh, I think this is not understood, understood yet. And I'm going to spend a few minutes on that and, and throw back to Christina when, when, mm -hmm. when I feel like I'm at the dead right, end. Go ahead. Now, <laughs> think of it this way. I'm at ICMCI, and ICMCI is all about my institutes, the IMCs. We at ICMCI are trying to make sure that you get the visibility. At the IMC level, should also think of giving visibility to their members, giving acknowledgement to their members. Now, that is part of what you should be doing. So it's not a benefit. It's not something that's um, rocket science. It is what you need to do. You need to support your members with giving them visibility, with giving them acknowledgement and all of that, but you will get something out of it. And, and let's be honest, their visibility means yours. Their acknowledgement means yours. If we want all to be the voice of the profession nationally and internationally, oh. then this is a very good chance for you to be the voice of the profession at a national level. You're the entity that gives the award of the best consulting project of the year in your country. What more could be? Now, other than all of those sentiments and, and, and like Gert says, I'm passionate about this, you also get the financial reward because when we say that the application of maximum three applications per IMC, um, that's against a thousand euros that is paid to ICMCI. But at a national level, when you have an award and you have applicants for your national award for at least two, three hundred, four hundred, maybe five hundred euros, depending on the economies and everything, then you would be making money out of this. That's income. Yeah. Having an ambassador who sells it, having an IMC who believes in it, having ICMCI to support it, mm. you have it on a gold platter. Just implement it. It yeah. does take some time. I, I understand. And everything that we do here at ICMCI takes time, but we all have the passion. We all have the, the responsibility, if I may say. It's not about just being an IMC. It's about what it is that an IMC is doing to its members. I'm sorry to say this out loud. You have to give them acknowledgement. You have to give them visibility. You have to be there for them if you want them to be members with your entity. That's part of what you do as an IMC. This is part, a part of what we do day in, day out at the ICMCI. We look at our members, we focus on the IMCs, and then we move forward. And this is what you should be doing at the IMC level. And again, we're giving you something that is almost ready-made. Christina, do you want to add anything? Um, um, just out of all the comments you made before, I think there are maybe three 
points that are important now. So first of all, to have a local award, like you said, to implement that locally. Um, then the ambassador role to, um, to be the mentor, as you said before, Rima, to really say you're the mentor to the local applicants and also to implement uh, uh, the support for the local um, applicants, uh, like to assist in a video conference uh, when they do it, do it for the first time, uh, for instance. And I think the third point that is important above that maybe is to really sell or show it as a seal of quality internationally, um, to promote it as a seal of quality if you participate, even if you're nominated. Of course, if you win a gold or a silver medal, to show um, this is really uh, something I can show internationally to my future clients maybe, or possible clients. And maybe that's another point we should um, put out more or try to put out more and show more that um, this is uh, really something you could benefit from in the future if you participate, and and it's it's uh, it can boost your business. So um, think yeah. about this, Christina. Yes. Everyone watches movies, and when the Oscars come out, everyone is sitting watching the Oscars on the TV. Yet we're management consultants, and we're not putting the time for our award, the Constantinos. We don't watch it because we don't attend. We do not participate or offer nominees, though it is an award. Mm -hmm. Imagine if all the, if all the movie people and, and the, those in the industry don't end up nominating anyone. Would you be interested in watching the, the, the Oscars? Would you feel that that is fair? We have an award, you guys. We have the Constantinos. It's, it's, it, it is our Oscars. Why would we encourage the Oscars and, and the movie industry when we're not able to encourage and promote and support our industry, the management consulting? You're right. Think of it that yeah. way. Yeah. Right. So let's be that's part good. of this. Let yeah, the IMCs like, be part of this. Sorry, Gert? Like, uh, like the movie industry, we have to entertain our members as well. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. We have, a sh we have a beautiful event that showcases and actually it's, it's a gala dinner and everyone is wearing fancy and we many times add the red carpet. Let's create our own red carpet. Let's create our recognition, our value to ourselves and make everyone see it and value it as well. So please think of it that way. I'm not trying to promote a product, by the way. Neither Christina is, nor Bert, nor, nor Soren, nor anyone who's on the school. We're not promoting a product. We're promoting acknowledgement. We're promoting our self-value in order to showcase it to everyone else. Um, a good doctor has, has many, um, uh, if I may call them clients, uh, but sick people promoting him if he does a good job. Be your client. Show appreciation to yourself. You like it when your client says thank you. Why is it that you don't go out for the recognition? Um, it is a, 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 a beautiful opportunity for IMCs, for CMCs, and mainly for clients. Oh Let's God. take advantage of it. Yeah, it's also beautiful for clients to have a successful project that is brought on stage in the limelight, like you said, and, and has uh, the media attention. So um, that's the chance to show that, the partnering of, of a consultant with the client. Um, and to really say, okay, here we are, we have uh, a seal of quality that is worldwide. We can show it worldwide. We open our mind and also think globally more. Could you ask, um, could you ask yes, only one question? Uh, uh, I would like to ask about the experience. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's possible during the recertification of CMC mm -hmm. to have some criteria, the candidate to apply minimum one times for the Constantinus Award. It is against the, the rule of the ICMCI or not? 
it, this is something implemented by the IMC and there's no rule against it at ICMCI. That's a definite. Yes, I know. If you want to incorporate perfect. it, that is perfect. I, I would give that uh, to uh, our professional standards committee. Maybe they, uh, they add it to the standards, but um, it doesn't need to be a must. It doesn't need to be included there in the rules and regulations. Actually, the ambassador would need to be someone who makes everyone just immediately go and apply for the Constantinus. So uh, making it, turning it into a rule, uh, I have my the, the big question mark in my head about it considered by some as, um, you know, uh, an uneasy point of entry, making it harder for people to become CMCs or members with the IMC, while we want to be open and accept as many uh, that deserve to be uh, members with, with IMCs. So we don't want to put kind of hurdles, but you know what, I'll discuss this further. I'll discuss it with the Professional Standards Committee. Thank you, Risto. Um, I have a comment here from Pika Lim, who's kind of, it's more of a statement. Rima, the local IMC ambassador seems to be by default the IMC uh, local president. And I wouldn't say that, uh, PK, because uh, the local president would be there for two years. What we're trying to do is establish someone who would raise the flag of the Constantinos for maybe up to four years, actually. Um, and and uh, the president would change. So that means more frequent changes of the ambassador. But also the ambassador would have a role to play while the local president already has that fault. So I don't know, adding to what they do day in, day out, is that, is that right or wrong? But that depends on the IMC itself. If their president can handle both and, and can be a good ambassador while being a great president, then, then fine. Really? But I believe someone more dedicated would be a better option. Yes, I great. The question, uh, how many candidates do we have for ambassadors worldwide? We we still, it's a, we're launching this good. Uh -huh. This is the launch okay. of this of this program. We we're going to announce it, like I mentioned, in a month's okay. time or a okay. month and a half, and we would ask for nominations from the IMCs. Uh -huh. okay. This is the launch of our ambassador and honorary programs. Um, so you're the first to get to know about it, and it will be implemented by the end of the year. Those would be named even before they would be named and enabled if I may say, before the end of the year, for them to start working at a national level. Yeah, but right, Christina? I think we have to find out informally before, mm -hmm. perhaps, who could be a candidate for an ambassador. It's a nomination process by the IMCs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's up to the IMC to decide yeah. who this person okay. would be. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. actually, we're past the hour. We're three minutes past the hour, Christina. So if you have some closing words to everyone, please go ahead. Okay, so um, thank you for all the questions, for all the input. Maybe there are even more questions after our session. Um, you can always send questions. We are happy to answer them. Um, yeah, um, like I said before, I think it's, it's uh, the ambassador has a great role to promote uh, the Constantinus International Award to be a mentor, to support the local applicants. And uh, the honorary president is uh, very important for the host country, should be a person known there, should be a person uh, connected to the Constantinus International Award uh, to promote it in the year of the Constantinus International Award. And together, um, these two could also promote the Constantinus International Award even more as a seal of quality worldwide, globally. And uh, like you said, Rima and Gert before, to showcase uh, the strength, the quality, the projects to bring, uh, to bring the, the, the limelight to our businesses and to be proud of, of, of what the consultants and their clients are doing and to showcase this and to give it a stage and therefore, um, yeah, we need people who are really passionate about it and, and want to support uh, the business and, and bring it uh, on top and, and show what we can. Thank you, Christina. Remember everyone, yeah. what we aim for is to be the voice of the profession. 
let's work towards that. Let's make sure that every IMC is the voice of the profession nationally. So that would make ICMCI the voice of the profession globally. This would give us exposure. This would give us the visibility. This would give us the acknowledgement. And this would give us the proper hand at actually setting more of the standards to what we aim to have this profession look like in 10, 15, 20, 50 years ahead. Uh, we have a role, let's play it properly. We have uh, the means, which is one of the means is the Constantinos International Award. We have the arms, which are the IMCs. Let's shake hands, guys. Okay, let's work on this. Let's be on top of it. And I would welcome all the questions, just like Christina said. She and I would address any question that you have, but please stay tuned for our announcement, okay? And, and thank you, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for caring about the profession. Thank you for caring for your members. And thank you for being our arms at each national country. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Christina, for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao.